Hi there, welcome to Friday the uh, 7th of September's IndyCar. My name is Gordon Ross. Today uh, I'm indebted to Dr. Mark McNaught for passing on some information uh, from Europe for me from the, of all things, the, the independent newspaper um, has published some details this morning about Brexit negotiations. And the, the news is actually pretty shocking. What, what appears to be happening is the British government is refusing to provide uh, a new backstop position for what will happen if we leave Europe without a trade deal, what will happen uh, if Brexit goes wrong, what will happen in Ireland. The British government appears to be dragging its feet and refusing to, to come up with another plan. They basically just said that their backstop plan uh, originally is the one that's still on the table. The Europeans have said quite bluntly that that's not acceptable and they need to come up with something that they can actually implement. In the meantime, uh, the Democratic Unionist Party has stated uncategorically that they refused uh, to accept the special offer which Brussels made to Ireland to have the North uh, remain inside the customs union to facilitate a frictionless border uh, across from the province into the Republic. Now the problem for, for the Tories is quite simple. The DUP are propping up their government at the moment and the DUP is basically holding the whole of the Brexit talks to ransom by deciding unilaterally that they will not accept anything uh, which makes Northern Ireland at, at any advantage with uh, with the EU as opposed to the rest of the UK. In other words, no special treatment is to be allowed for Northern Ireland. The DUP wants Brexit, they want it to be hard and they want a barrier across the, the island of Ireland. That's clearly uh, exactly what the Democratic Unionists want. <clears throat> now the weird thing is, of course, that the Democratic Unionists, despite uh, being in a position to prop up the UK government are not as popular north of the border in Ireland as people might expect. And in fact, they are not in a majority there. And the reason why there's no government in Stormont at the moment is because the DUP torpedoed all attempts to form a government with Sinn Féin, probably deliberately because they wanted uh, London to centralise power and also for uh, for them to, to Brexit with no deal and to Brexit with a wall across Ireland because that really is what the DUP wants. It's a sad state of affairs but the entire British state is being held to ransom by a dozen Northern Irish uh, MPs who literally hold Mrs., uh, Mrs May by the hair at the moment in terms of what they have, you know, the power they can exert over the British state. The Europeans are frustrated though because they've been desperately wanting to move things on. The deadline for just the Brexit agreement, this is not the trade deal incidentally, this is just to negotiate a clean exit so that everybody knows what's going to happen the day after Brexit. Even that is now at risk simply because of both the DUP and the fact that the British state is refusing to come up with a new backstop. But not only are they refusing to come up with a backstop, but the British government doesn't even have the data on how much trade is crossing the Irish border every day. The European Union has asked repeatedly for the data to be provided by the UK, which illustrates how much trade is flowing back and forward across the Irish border say on an average year, let's say, so that they have some way of quantifying the amount of trade being done uh, and how to estimate the amounts of, let's say, tariffs and things like that that would be placed on goods crossing in and out of uh, Northern Ireland. So rather than having tariffs placed on every single cargo, that they can come up with some quantitative answer to charging tariffs for imports, which is more one payment by the government rather than a whole lot of little payments by all the different companies. But the government, the British government, still cannot supply that data. They just don't know. And this is a problem with the British government. Anywhere outside of London, they don't really care about it. So they have taken their eye off the ball in Northern Ireland for decades, thinking that it's a done deal. Just let things trundle along there. Don't need to watch what's going on. They have no idea what trade crosses the border between the north and the south, just as they have no idea how, uh, how healthy the Scottish economy is. They also seem to have no idea how healthy our productivity is either. 
another alert reader this morning passed me another piece of information. Now, the David Hume uh, think tank had yesterday published figures which stated that Scottish uh, productivity had flatlined, it wasn't increasing. This, in fact, was a lie. And it's a lie because they didn't include certain other factors in their estimate of productivity. They were deliberately left out of the statistics. Now, this is a think tank which alleges itself to be politically uh, independent. In other words, it's non-partisan. It doesn't take any position on Scottish independence or lack of it. And yet they have deliberately allowed this report to go out having basically omitted certain information that would have shown that Scottish productivity had actually grown and was running, I think, 1.7% uh, growth in the last year. And also they left out the fact that the UK's growth, uh, the UK's productivity figure had actually shrunk in comparison. The UK productivity figure has gone down 0.4%. That was never mentioned either. So we're still getting fed all the so-called expert uh, advice from so-called think tanks. Now, they, all of these think tanks are nearly all right-wing neoliberal groups of professors who are probably all Tory voting, uh, middle-of-the-road, politically middle-class uh, economists, right? And, and all of these people do not have any uh, sympathy whatsoever for any kind of uh, constitutional change because it's not in their interest to do so and it doesn't it doesn't chime with their background, with with their teaching, with their uh, their life expectancies, their, their life experiences. So they have put out this report, which basically trashes Scotland's excellent record in productivity. Our productivity has gone up. Yesterday's report was a fabrication. It had huge omissions in it. And not only that, but they concealed the fact that British productivity has dropped. It's not steady. Scotland's was steady, according to them, yesterday. But actually, when you factor in these other things that were left out of the report, it shows a, a growth in productivity in Scotland, not a contraction and not going into the doldrums as they have claimed. So it's the usual story. There are statistics are can be bent into all kinds of different shapes depending on what information you leave in and what information you omit. And that is clearly what they have done with this report yesterday. So good news for Scotland is that our productivity is actually up, not down. British productivity is down and not up. And the DUP is preventing Britain from getting a smooth Brexit at the moment. As we speak, the British government is refusing to give data to the EU on how much traffic is crossing the border every year and how much, what's the value of those, of those uh, traded items and services. The DUP is holding the Tories to ransom and the way things look at the moment, they will miss not even, not just the deadline for October, but they may not even be able to provide a backstop agreement by November. Now, if that is the case, the European Union will lose patience completely and say, forget it, you're not going to get a trade deal now because you cannot even negotiate your own exit from the EU. Never mind a future trade deal, you can't provide the basic information and the basic guarantees for the Good Friday Agreement that you promised you would two years ago. You still can't do it. I think things are looking bad, very bad indeed now, uh, and information is coming to me from Europe, from reliable sources, from professional uh, people, from academics, from political scientists all over the place. I get information from people inside academic, uh, the academic world, inside political institutions, inside the European Union itself, and inside government departments. And they all tell me the same thing, that the British government has nothing. It doesn't have a position on Ireland, it doesn't know what to do about it, and the DUP is exploiting this for their own ends. And their own end is to divvy up Ireland into North Ireland, which will be British as far as they're concerned, and the South, and never the twain shall meet. They want to build the equivalent of a Berlin Wall across Ireland, and to reinstate 
the watchtowers and the dark days of the troubles because that is the ultimate aim of the DUP is to separate themselves from Ireland completely to build themselves into a tiny little London state all by themselves that they can run and, and basically be subservient to the UK and wave their flags. It's a great shame that so few people in the UK are holding the entire United Kingdom to ransom, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, England, holding us all to ransom just so that they can divide their nation up along Protestant Catholic lines, along sectarian bigoted margins. That's the problem with Brexit at the moment and this is the problem that a dying empire has got to face that it's going to have to let certain countries go because it has held them back too long. It has stopped them from developing, it's stopped them from reunifying, and it's stopped them from separating themselves from the British state and flourishing. Instead of that, it is dragging them all down with it. As Britain flails around looking for answers and looking for solutions to Brexit problems, <clears throat> it's being blackmailed by the last of the British colonies and the last of the British loyal colonies is Northern Ireland. Scotland's loyalty to the UK has gone. It disappeared in 2014 with the rigged referendum that the Section 30 order made us accept even though we knew it was rigged, even though everybody knew we had been cheated and even though everybody knew that the result was not reliable we couldn't challenge it because of the, th the Section 30 handcuff order. It's a gagging order. It means you have to accept something no matter how unfair or how illegally it was obtained. Things are coming to a crux now and I think by November we'll know for certain but it's looking likely that not only is there not going to be any kind of trading deal after Brexit but there's not actually even going to be a Brexit deal we're going to chaotically leave the the the, United, the the European Union without any kind of negotiated settlement at all. There are going to be ramifications and chaos everywhere as a result of this. All because the DUP wants to build a wall across Ireland. It's unacceptable and it's time that Scotland made a decision before it gets dragged into this absolute maelstrom of chaos that is heading our way. It's not even as though it's um, it's an, an orderly uh, leaving of the EU. It's not orderly. It's descending more and more into farce and chaos because of one group of bigoted, old-fashioned, dying out diehards who cannot allow progress to happen. And progress needs to happen for Ireland's sake, for Scotland's sake, and for the rest of the UK as well, for their sake. Everybody needs an orderly Brexit. If it's going to happen, it needs to happen in an organised fashion, and that is not looking likely now. When political commentators and political scientists are contacting me in alarm at the way things are going with the Brussels negotiations, I'm worried because these guys don't usually worry about such things. But when they're worried, and they see catastrophe looming, and they see the British state dragging its feet and refusing to cooperate with Brussels. They know what's coming. Everybody in Europe can see it's coming. It's only in Britain that we're having blinkers put on us and told that everything's okay, everything is in hand. And clearly, it just isn't in hand. The people who are driving the whole of the Brexit deal at the moment, the way it's done, are a tiny group of Northern Irish people who have decided that what they want is more important than what happens to the rest of the UK. That's the truth of the matter. The needs of the few, and it's the very, very few in Northern Ireland, not even the majority of people, the needs of the few are outweighing the needs of the many, to coin an old Star Trek phrase. And in Scotland's case, we're already sick of this. We're already sick of being outnumbered and outmaneuvered by other, other nations trying to uh, manage our affairs. Now we've got Ireland, uh, Northern Irish politics sticking its oar in the water as well, trying to mess it up for us in that way as well, because we are still part of the UK and we are going to suffer for it. So I think we have to say no. And it's time we said no in a ballot box which says Scotland is going to leave the UK because we cannot tolerate 
this kind of meddling, interference, chaotic uh, blackmail going on uh, between one tiny party in one corner of the United Kingdom's failing uh, empire, uh, controlling everything that happens to us. It's ridiculous. The power has moved from where it should have been to where it shouldn't be, and Scotland needs to get its own power back and rescue itself before it's too late. Anyway, have a good weekend, but remember, Scotland's economy is doing a hell of a lot better than these so-called experts would have us believe, and yesterday's claim that our productivity was flatlining was a lie. Our productivity is more than double that of the United Kingdom's. See you later. Bye for now.